I'm Paul from Beyond the Trail, and if you're new to my channel, I'll just explain that I live up here in the absolutely beautiful North Wales, and I offer a guiding service in the mountains of Snowdonia. And as part of that, I also offer navigation training. So today I'm starting a new video series on navigation, specifically mountain navigation. Now people will generally have some idea of what navigation is. And in simplest terms, it's the idea of knowing where I am now, where I want to go to, and how I'm going to get there. In the mountains, that's a little more difficult than navigation in our everyday life, where we might be going through a town, we've got signposts, we've got roads. But in the mountains, you have to have a, a different set of skills, usually involving the use of a map and also a compass. So in this video series, I'm going to talk through the concepts that we use for navigation in the mountains. I'm going to base that mostly on these strategies based around a five point system that we refer to as the five D's. And those five D's are direction, distance, duration, description and destination. So these five D's of direction, distance, duration, description and destination are all really useful tools, especially in poor visibility, maybe bad weather or at night, because they will give you confirmation during that leg of the journey and when you reach your objective to be very confident that you are where you think you are. Let's have a look at each of these D's in a little bit more detail. The first one is direction and it's very useful to be able to use a compass and a map to take a bearing and then follow that bearing along that leg of the journey. The second one is distance. You can confirm how far you've gone once you've taken a measurement of actually how long that leg is. So let's say I'm at this point on the map and I need to get a junction with a stream. I can use my compass scales to measure along the map and it tells me it's 200 meters. Then I can measure that out along the ground as I walk. The third element is duration. Well, if I know how far I'm going, I should be able to estimate how long that's going to take and that will help me again with confirmation and that will change of course according to the terrain the visibility how heavy your pack is and who's walking with you then description really important and very useful have a look at the map over those 200 meters what are you going to encounter that gives you confirmation as you're moving or maybe after the first 50 meters you cross a wall or maybe a fence perhaps you're going to be going downhill by three contours, 30 meters in descent. That's gonna help you to, to know that you're going the right way. And if you were going uphill, you'd know there's something wrong. And then destination, finally. If you were to have a look at the map and think, well, when I have traveled those 200 meters, that junction with the stream, what else am I gonna see there? Is there really steep ground behind me or dropping off? Is there a wall nearby? You just look at the features around that location when you arrive there, do they match up with what you see on the map? So in this video series on mountain navigation, I'm actually going to take each of those elements, the five Ds, and deal with them in separate videos. And what I'm going to start with today is actually something really simple and very fundamental, and it's pacing. It's actually counting how many steps you take in 100 meters, so that you can say, as you travel on the ground, how far you've traveled and we use pacing to do that. So when we're measuring distance along the ground as we walk, what we actually do is we count our paces. Now we don't count every step, every time our left foot and the right foot hits the ground, we count our double paces because that means it's gonna be a lot easier to keep track, especially if we're doing a long leg on the journey. So let's say I start off with my left leg, I'll count one and then two, Every time my right foot hits the ground, that's going to be a pace, a double pace. So one, two, three, and so on. But the next question, of course, is, well, how many paces do I do in 100 meters? And that's going to be different for you, anyone with shorter legs or longer legs. You're going to find that we have a different number of double paces in 100 meters. So you're going to have to find that out for yourself. And that's what I'm going to look at in this video now is actually how you're going to do that. So what you'll need to do now is figure out how many double paces you do in 100 meters. And the first problem you'll have is, well actually, how do I measure out 100 meters 
along the ground. One simple way to do that, if you've got a sports field near you, is go and see if there's 100 metres measured out on a sports track. For me, it's quite easy. I take a 50 metre climbing rope, I lay it out on some ground, and then I walk the 50 metres and I'll measure my double paces. It comes out at 30. But then I'll do that a few times to make sure that there's no inconsistencies. And after I've done it maybe four times, I'll see that I'm doing 30 double paces for every 50 metres. I can double that. That gives me 60 double paces in 100 metres. Once you've worked out how many double paces you use for every 100 metres, you can start using that as a tool then for measuring your distance travelled along the ground. So for me, 60 double paces for 100 metres. Let's use an example now that I'm on a summit and I need to get to the start of a path that drops down onto a ridge and the ground from the summit is fairly flat. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a bearing, that gives me my direction. I can't see much because of the visibility so I'm going to have to rely on counting my paces to make sure I know that I've travelled far enough to find that path on that bearing. And I'll start walking on that bearing and I'll count my first 60 double paces. I won't then count through to 120 and so on. I'll count my first 60, that's 100 metres. I'll start counting again to 60, that's my second 100 metres. I've got 100 metres to go, I'll count to 60 again and sure enough after 300 metres on that bearing I arrive at the path exactly as I hope to. It's an absolutely brilliant tool and when you put that in with the other D's, the direction, distance, duration, description and destination, it's a really brilliant strategy and a really brilliant system for accurate mountain navigation. A little bit later in the series I'll revisit this point about pacing and actually look in a little bit more detail about how the ground that you're walking on will affect your pacing. So for example if you're travelling uphill you might get shorter paces therefore you'll have more to count for every hundred metres. The same with downhill and you'll find that at some point that actually pacing becomes less relevant and timing, duration, will start to take over.